Alrighty, let's do something called um, sequences and series. What it is is, is essentially it's pattern finding. Let me show you what this means. We're also going to define some terms. Alrighty. So this question says, determine a formula that defines the arithmetic sequence of these numbers. So what's the pattern here? Do you notice any patterns? We have 3, 12, 21, and 30. When it says the word arithmetic, it's going to be either you're going to be adding something or you're going to be subtracting something to get the next number. So over here, what do we add each time to get the next number? Nine. Nine. So that is called your difference. Do they define it? They don't define it, but that's called your arithmetic difference. Can be either a positive number or a negative number. So in this case, our D is nine. That's the difference. If it was decreasing, if it was the other way around, then D would be negative nine. Now the first number here in the sequence, this is called, well, it's the first term. There's two ways to denote that. It's either called T1, which means the first term, or it's also called the A value. And that is going to be equals to three, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it says determine a formula that determines the sequence. So what's the formula here? What do we add each time, I guess? That's You can look at it like this. So this is T1, this is T2, this is T3, this is T4. How mm -hmm. can we get T5? Add nine. Add nine, right? But it says find a formula. So what we can do is we can just add nine to the previous term mm -hmm. like this. Now this next part is kind of important and it's, it's gonna be a little bit confusing Tn means the nth term. N can be any number. That is always going to be equal to Tn minus 1, the term prior to that nth term. So T5, T4. Tn minus 1 is the term before. So if this is Tn, this is T minus 1. If this is Tn, this is T minus 1. You just add 9 to T minus 1, like that. And that is the general form of this sequence. OK? Mm -hmm. Just add 9 to the previous term. This is also called, it has a name. It's also called the recursive formula. Recursive formula. Recursive uses the previous term to get the next term. Part B here, it says state a formula that de defines each term of any arithmetic sequence. Now the next part is just a simple formula. Um, Tn, this is using the recursive. To use the recursive, you need to know the term before. Like for example, if I asked you what's T50, well, the only way to get T50 is if you know T49 and if you add nine to it. But most of the time, you're not going to know what T49 is. So recursive fails in that sense. Recursive is only good if you know the previous term. In an example like this, recursive is no good. So how do we get T50 if we don't know what T49 is? There's a formula for it. And this is the formula. Tn is going to be A plus n minus 1 times d. 
So if we plug everything in here, let's say we want to find T50, it'll be A. A is the first term, it's 3, plus 50 is our N value, minus 1, and our common difference was D. So this becomes 3 times um, 49 times 9. And you just plug that in, and that'll give you your 50th term, 444. There you go, that's your 50th term. But the answer to part B is this. That will always give you the term number that you're looking for. But to use this, you need um, your A value. You need the first um, term in the sequence. And you also need the common difference. This is basically a straight line, like this one, Tn equals A plus N minus 1D. You can treat Tn as Y. A, and then let me open this bracket, A plus N times D minus D. Now while our variable is N, N is our X. So you can treat this as A minus D plus N times D. This is in the form of M X uh, plus B. So this is your intercept. This is your slope. The common difference is your slope and your n is essentially an x. So this is just, in its bare bones, a linear relationship. That's just a straight line. We're not going to worry too much about the straight line bit. That's just to show you that it's just a linear function. The important thing here is to know the formula and how to use it. Like here's an example. So here your A is 18. A's are always T1. Um, N is 33. We're looking for the 33rd term. What is our D value? What's the difference? How do we get from 18 to 11? Think of a number line. You're at 18. You need to get to 11. How do you get there? Minus 7. Minus 7. So that's going to be your D value. It's always going to be T2 minus T1, or T3 minus T2, or T4 minus T3. The next term minus the previous term. Or you can just think of it this way as well. Or you can also think of it like, how do we get to 11 from 18? Well, you subtract a 7. So here, the recursive relationship, Tn is going to be Tn minus 1 minus 7. The next term, Tn represents the next term, will always be equals to the previous term. Tn minus 1 is the previous term, minus this constant of a 7. This is called the recursive relationship. To find T33, that's the question. What's our 33rd term? This is what we're looking for. If you want to use a recursive, you need the 32nd term, which we don't have. So this approach is not going to work. Another way to rewrite this is like this, Tn plus 1. That is equals to Tn minus 7. Both of these things, they mean the exact same thing. Tn plus 1 here represents the next term, same as this. Tn minus 1 represents the previous term, same as this. You can use either one of these. They're both um, the recursive relations. But here, the point is that neither one of these is going to work because we don't have T32. That's what we would need here. So we're going to use the other formula, which is, again, very simple. Tn is A plus N minus 1 times D. 
So T33 becomes A was 18. Well, N is 33 minus 1, and D is negative 7, like that. And then you just plug this in. So 18 plus 32 times negative 7. Final answer, negative 206. And you are done. Okay? Mm -hmm. Did that make sense? Yeah. That's just what it is, right? That's That's pretty much it. It's not too bad. And if you open this, let me just show you. If you just simply um, open this, let's say you don't know your n value. So a is um, 18 plus n minus 1 times negative 7. When you open that bracket, you get 18 minus 7 plus 7, right? Uh, yep. Yeah then that'll be 25 minus 7n. So this, you can treat it as y equals uh, b minus mx. It's just a straight line. The y value, or the intercept, is 25. And your slope is negative 7. So this is what your line is going to look like. On the x-axis here, we have the term number, n. When n is 1, you get 18. n being 0, by the way, makes no sense because you're looking for the 0th term, which doesn't have much practical sense. But So you can kind of ignore that if you would like. You can just start from the x value of 1. Let me just start right here. And then you can keep going. You just follow this line. T2 would be here. T3 would be here. For us, we want N as 33. So we would go all the way here and we'd go down. We'll never use this approach, but this is what we're actually doing. And that's how you get the answer. OK? Mm -hmm. It's just a straight line. All right, Terry invests 300 in a GIC account. Um, that pays 6% simple interest per year. When will his investment be worth $732? All right, so here, let's see how much he makes per year. So in interest, he is making 6% of 300. That is $18, just 0 0.06 times 300. So he's making $18 per year. Now the question is, how many years is it going to take for him to go from 300 to 732? And this is the answer. The time it'll take you just subtract 732 minus 300, find the difference, and then you're going to divide that by 18 because you can only earn $18 per year. And that will be, what is this, 432 divided by 18, which is 24. So it's going to take him 24 years uh, to get 732 from 300 using simple interest. A lot of GICs are in fact simple interest, which means the consumer loses out. Simple interest, you're only paid once. You remember the difference between simple interest and compound interest? Mm -hmm. Compound interest compounds upon itself. So it combines the interest from the interest, whereas simple interest doesn't do that. It only compounds once. So simple interest will always lose. This next question is difficult.
it's difficult in the sense that you had this becomes a system of linear equations, but we know how to do it. So the seventh term of an arithmetic sequence is 53. All right, so let me give you the general formula. Tn is a plus n minus 1 times d. What will T7 be using this statement? If you plug everything you know into the formula, do we know the A value? No, so we don't know that. Do we know the N value? Seven. Seven. So N minus one becomes six, seven minus one times D. And we know that this is equals to 53. The seventh term is 53. Similarly, the 11th term, so T11 will be A plus what D? Eleven. Uh, won't be eleven. You need to plug eleven in there. It will be ten, because it's n minus one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it'll be ten d like this, and that is equals to ninety-seven. And look at this. I can ignore this bit. We have a system of linear equations. We have two unknowns, which is a and d, and we have two equations. So we should be able to solve it. Let's use elimination. Do we add or subtract? Subtract. Subtract. So you will get negative 4d is equals to negative 44. So d is 11. So your common difference is 11. We can plug this 11 into either one of these two equations. So we get a plus 6 times 11 is 53. So a is going to be 53 minus 66. a is negative 13. And the question now says determine the hundredth term. So we are looking for t100. I'm just going to plug it into this formula. We know our a value, that is negative 13, plus our n value now is 100, minus 1, and our d value is an 11. Let's plug this in and we're pretty much done. So negative 13 plus 99 times 11. So the hundredth term in this series would be 1076. Cool? Mm -hmm. So all we did here was that we solved a system of linear equations. And then we used it in, in the final formula to get the hundredth term. Yeah, let's try doing these guys. The math itself is easy. Coming up with the recursive sometimes can be tricky, especially if the pattern is weird. Can get really difficult really quickly. Let's see these guys. It says determine the recursive formula in the general term for the sequence. Alrighty, so part A. It says the first term is 19 and consecutive terms increase by 8. So our D value is 8. So what would be our recursive formula? How do we get the next term? You take the previous term, tn minus 1, and then you add an 8 to it. You can write it like this, or you can also write it like this. They both pretty much mean the same thing. The next term will always be the previous term, and then you're going to add 8 to it. This is called a recursive relationship. Now it says find a general term formula. The general term formula uses Tn. The formula for which is this. Tn is a plus n minus 1 times d. 
So if we plug everything that we know into this equation, what do we get? We know the we don't know the n value, but we do know the d value. There we go. And this will be the final answer for the general formula. Okay. Mm -hmm. B is the same thing. Look at how quickly this can you can do this. B, T1 is four consecutive terms decreased by five. So we know A is four and D is minus five. So the next term, you take the previous term, you subtract five from it. For the general term, you take your A value, you subtract N minus one, and then you multiply this by negative five. And there we go. That's it. Easy peasy. For C, what is our D value? What's the difference? Five. Five, and then it's the exact same thing. Instead of adding five, subtracting five, you would add five, and four would become 21, and you would multiply by positive five for part C. What about part D? What do we know from part D? What's our D value? 12. Positive 12 or negative 12? Negative. Now we don't know our A value. So we can't already write the general formula just yet, but we can write the recursive. For recursive, you just need the difference. So the next term will always be the previous term minus 12. How do you think we can find our A value here? So our fourth term is 35. Consecutive terms decrease by 12. So that means you're going to be subtracting 12. T5 would be 23. But we need our A value. To find the general term, if you look at the formula, you need the A value. You need T1. So you need to work backwards. To find T6, you would subtract 12, but we don't want to go down this path. We want to go backwards. We want to go to T3. What's T3 going to be? Forty-seven. Yeah, 47. T2 would be 59. T1, or our A value, would then be 71. And this is what we're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. Because the general term uses the A value, uses T1. So your general term will be 71 plus N minus 1 times negative 12. There we go. That's the general term. This next question is slightly tricky because of the notation. All right, let's 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 look at this one. A, T1 is 13. That's our first term. That's fine. The question is asking us, determine whether this recursive formula determines an arithmetic sequence. For this to be true, the common difference has to be constant. You can't have a difference of 7 from T1 to T2 and then have a difference of 8 from T2 to T3. All the differences between each terms should be exactly the same. The Ds need to be constant. So let's use that in part A. I'm going to find T2. Look at this. T2, or N is 2, that is equals to 14 plus Tn minus 1. So that's T2 minus 1, T1. To find T2, you just add 14 to T1. So that's going to be 27. T3 will be 14 plus Tn minus 1 represents T3 minus 1, T2. So 14 plus 27 is 41. 
So 13, 27, 41, the next one will be 55, the next one will be 69. Does this represent an arithmetic sequence? You remember the condition is that the differences have to be the same. It does. It does. So that's the answer to this. Let's look at C. I'm gonna do the first one, okay? Here, let me just show you some extra steps so you don't get confused. T1 is given, I'm gonna find T2. I'm replacing N with a two. So T2 becomes, Tn becomes C2. Tn minus one becomes T2 minus one plus two minus one. So T2 is T1 plus one. So that's four plus one, that's a five. T3 will be, again, I'm plugging it in here. N is three, that becomes T3 minus one, so that's T2 plus three minus one. T2 is five. So we get five plus two, we get a seven. What's gonna be T4? The fourth term in this sequence. So let's work from here. So T4 will be Tn minus one. What's that? T3, right? Mm -hmm. Plus N is four now. So this N is gonna be four minus one. And we know T3 is a seven. So it'll be seven plus a three. T4 is gonna be 10. T5 will be, again, I'm following this. Look at this, T5 will be T4, because you're always doing Tn minus one. So T5 minus one is T4, plus five minus one. That N is as it is. T4 was 10, so we have 10 plus four, we have 14. So our pattern is four, T1, T2 is a five, T3 is a seven, T4 is a 10, T5 is a 14. Does this represent an arithmetic sequence? No. No, why not? Because the Ds are not the same. You're adding mm -hmm. one here, you're adding two here, you're adding three here, you're adding four here. Do you see the pattern? What's well, gonna be the next number? Five. You'd add five, so it'll be 19, right? The next number you'd add a six, which will be 25. That's still a sequence. It's just not a arithmetic sequence. Okay, why don't you tell me what's T2 gonna be? Give me the number. For B. All you have to do is this just replace the N with what it is. So in this case, our N is two. So this becomes three times T two minus one. And we know two minus one is a one. So it becomes three times T one. T one is given, it's five. So it's three times five, it's a 15. Do you understand mm -hmm. this? Why don't you tell me what T three is?
Again, we're following this every single time. So T3 will be 3 times T what? 3. 3 minus 1, right? Mm -hmm. N minus 1. So it'll be 3 times T2, the second term, which we know 15. Yeah, so it'll be 45. Because this is very simple. The next one will be 3 times 45, which is uh, what's 135. The next one will be 3 times 135. The next one will be 3 times 3 times 135. So that's the pattern. Mm -hmm. So our numbers are 5, 15. We can already just use three numbers here to decipher this. Is this an arithmetic sequence? We added 10, and then we added 30, and then we added like 90. Is that an arithmetic sequence? The answer is no, OK? Mm -hmm. It ain't, because the d values are not the same. Easy as that. In fact, this one, okay, I'll tell you this. We'll be doing this in a little bit, or maybe tomorrow. But the fact that you have to multiply a number to get the next number, like here, this is times 3. Here, this is times 3. Here, this is times 3. That is still constant. This times 3 is called your r value. When you multiply, it becomes r. When you add or subtract, it becomes d. r is called the common ratio. D is the common difference. R is called the common ratio. If your R's are constant, then it's not an arithmetic sequence. It's called a geometric sequence. If you have to multiply a number to get the next number, that is a geometric. If you add something to get the next one, arithmetic. All right, let's look at part D. I don't think that's a sequence, arithmetic sequence, but let's see. It looks weird. I know it looks weird, but it's not that bad. You're just replacing the ends. You just got to look at it that way. Look at this. T2. I'm just going to replace all the ends with a 2 now. Negative 2 plus 2, 0. Gone. Then we have 2 times T2 minus 1. And in the subscript, we have 2 minus 1, which becomes T1 like that. So that's 2 times 1. That's a 2. T3. Again, I'm following this. T3 will be 2 times T3 minus 1 minus 3 plus 2. So this is 2 times T2 minus 1. That's 2 times 2 minus 1. That is a 3. We can just stop here. This is our pattern. Maybe not. Maybe we can't. Let's go one more level. All we're doing is we're multiplying the previous term with a 2. Tn minus 1 means the previous term. So if we have T4, Tn minus 1 is T3. So you're just multiplying that 2 with the third term, which was a 3 minus n. So now n is 4 plus 2. So you get 6 minus 2. That is a 4. Is this an arithmetic sequence? Yes. Yes, because the common difference is one. Cool? Mm -hmm. Coming up with these is not easy. But if they give you that to begin with, then you can work with it. Maybe we'll just do a couple of these. Which one looks dicey? Let's do fractions. Because who doesn't like fractions? All right. Let's look at E. We know our A is 1. What is our D value? What did we add to 1 to get 6 fifths? Or what did we add to 6 fifths to get 7 fifths? One fifth. One fifth. So D is 1 fifth. So look at how easy this is. For I, the general term is always going to be in the form of Tn. That is A plus 
n minus 1 times d. a is 1, n is n, and d is 1 fifth. There we go. For the recursive formula, the next term will always be the previous term plus 1 fifth, right? Mm -hmm. And for t11, we we're just going to plug 11 in here. t11 will be, again, we know our sequence. It's going to be 1 plus 11 minus 1 times 1 fifths. That's 1 plus 10 fifths. So that's going to be 15 over 5 or, or, or 3. And that's it. Easy peasy. F is also super simple because A is 0. 0.4, D is 17, and you have everything, right? Mm -hmm. Arithmetic sequence is super simple because you're just adding something each time or subtracting, depends on your D value. Again, same kind of idea here. Um, they've given us the relationship and we're gonna identify whether this is arithmetic or not. And remember, the common differences have to be the same. So this is a general pattern they've given us. Let's find T1. Tell me for A, what's our first term? If you replace N with one, what do you get? You just have to replace this N with a one. So it's six. Six done. What about T2? Four. Replaces four, yeah. T3 will be two. T4 will be zero. T5 will be negative two. Is that an arithmetic sequence? Yes. Yes. Here's a shortcut. Because this is in the, in the form of um, b minus mx, or negative mx plus b. Is that a straight line? Yes. Yes. Straight lines, automatically arithmetic sequence. We couldn't do this for, where'd it go? For these guys. But these ones, we know it's a straight line. What about C? Is C a straight line? Yes. Yes. Is that going to be an arithmetic sequence? Mm -hmm. The answer is yes. OK. If you have a line that you know, then for sure. Okay, what about B? Do you think this is gonna be an arithmetic sequence? Is that a straight line? No. No. Here, let's let's see. Um, what am I trying to do? I'll show you how to do this in um Gonna save some time here. So we need five terms. And our pattern is n squared. So you take this, you square it minus three times that term plus seven. Like that. And the beauty about Excel is that once you have one, you have all of them. All you need to do is click this and drag this down. Does that look like an arithmetic sequence? No. No, we already knew that though, right? Because it was not a straight line. There's no way that's an arithmetic sequence. That's a quadratic because of that n squared. We can do the same thing for D. Look at this. It's going to look weird. One, two, three, four, five. Because we just need the first five terms. 
That's what it says, five terms up there. So for this one, it's going to be slightly more trickier. We're going to need brackets. So it'll be two times that term number plus five in the numerator divided. But the answer is it's not an arithmetic sequence. We already know it, but let's prove it. It will be seven minus three times this. Close bracket. Look at the formula there. To input a formula on an Excel, you always have to put the equal sign first. Press Enter. That'll be your first number. And then you just drag it like that. Does that look like a straight line? Look at the common differences. It's all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. That is most definitely not a straight line. So that is not an arithmetic sequence. What you can do with these is you can also visualize them. Once you have your numbers, you just go to insert charts and just click the first one, this one. That does not look like a straight line. So that's out. And then we do the same thing with these guys. Highlight all of them. Insert chart. Again, the first one. I don't even know what that is. Um, yeah, it's because there's an asymptote for that one. Like this one, there's going to be an asymptote here. You have this guy going this way. You have this guy going this way. It'll never cross the asymptote. But the point is that they're not linear. And you don't have to know do all this to see that they're not linear. Just look at the equation if they give it to you as they have here. All right, let's go to question um, 10. This is kind of where you earn your money, I guess. Question 10. An opera house has 27 seats in the first row. So think of it like this. So in the first row, this is the stage. This is the priciest tickets. You have 27, 34, and so on. And we don't know how many rows there are. But we know the last row has 181. Part A says, how many seats are there in the 10th row? So the question A is asking us for T10. And question B, how many rows of seats are there? It's asking us for the N. How many Ns are there? This is N1, N2, N3, N4, like that. What do we know? Tell, tell me what do we know. Do we know A? Do we know D? What do we know? A is 27. Yeah. D is 7. D7. Can we find T10? Remember, the formula is A plus N minus 1 times D. T10 would be 27 plus 6 times 7. Sorry, 9 times 7. N minus 1. So 10 becomes 9. 9 times 7. So that's 27 plus 63. That's 90. Let me just double check. Uh, yeah. So there are 90 seats in the 10th row. Okay. That's it. That's her part one. Mm -hmm. Part B looks difficult, but it's really not that difficult. Because now all we have to do is you need to be able to identify this. What is this? That's our last term, right? Mm -hmm. That is TN. So we're going to replace TN with 181. A is 27, but now N is missing. We want to know for which N value would you get a TN of 181. So it'll be N we don't know, but we do know D7. There we go. Now we have a linear equation here. How do we solve this equation for N? You subtract 27. Yeah, you're going to subtract 27. And then? Can you open up those brackets? You could, but that will be an extra step. You divide by 7. So that's 22 equals n minus 1. So n is 23. So there are 23 rows in this opera house. And that's the answer to part B. 
So again, the math is very simple. You just have to be able to identify that this is TN. The last row is TN. The last number is TN. And you're looking for this N. TN is given. What's your N? And that's T subscript N, right? That's one term. It's one mm -hmm. variable. It's the same thing as saying an X or a Y. What do we know here? The 50th term is 238 and the 93rd term is 539. Do we know our A and our D values? No. No. If you don't know either one of them, it's gonna be a system of linear equations. So to approach this, you just follow the formula for the general term. We know T50 is 238. Let's plug 50 into this formula. So A, we don't know. We know N is 50, so 50 minus 1 is 49D. And that's going to be your first equation. Can you tell me what our second equation will be? What goes on the right side of this equation? You just have to plug 93. A plus 92D, yeah? Mm -hmm. well, there we go. You can erase this, and you have a system of linear equations. Substitution is the way to go for these, and you need to subtract them. So mm -hmm. 238 minus 539 is negative 301. A is gone to Narnia, and 49 minus 92 is negative 43. And divide both sides by negative 43. D7, plug that back in here. So you have 238 is equals to A plus 49 times 7. So A will be 238 minus 49 times 7. And that's the answer, whatever that is. Um, A is negative 105. And you're done. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's just this easy formula. It's, it's honestly not that bad. So if you add something, it's going to be an arithmetic sequence. Not add, sorry, plus minus, plus minus. But if you multiply or divide, it's going to be a geometric sequence. So that's what we're going to be doing next. So let's look at a question. How hard could it possibly be? Let's start off with an easy example. So we have two for the most common one, 8, 16, 32, 64, yada, yada. What's our A value here? Two. Two. It's T2, this is T3, this is T4, T5. Now we don't use D anymore. We use R. D is T2 minus T1. R is T2 over T1. What's our R value? It's 2. It's 2. Another way to think of this is, what do I need to do to 2 to get a 4? And it has to be either a multiplication or a division for a geometric. What do you have to do to 4 to get an 8? You can look at any one of these. You don't have to look at the first two terms. You can look at these two. You can look at any middle two, any of them. So here, R is 2. That is called a common ratio. D was called a common difference. This is called a common ratio. Now, the general form for a geometric, because we're, uh, we're multiplying, it's going to be slightly different. The general form is this. Tn is equals to A times R n minus 1. So here we know T5 is 32, but we can double check. T5 will be A 
times r, which is also a, to the power of 5 minus 1. That's 2 times 2 power 4. That's 2 times 16. That's 32. And that's how we could have gotten this. OK? Mm -hmm. I'm going to use this. That's the answer to part B, basically. The, the formula that we have up there is the answer to part B. For part A, we just replace these things. So we're looking for T13, the 13th term as well we're looking for. The first term A is 9, and the common ratio is 2. So it becomes 9 times 2 to the power of 13 minus 1. That is, I don't know what that is. So 9 times 2 to the power of 12 is a huge number, 38,864. And that's it. That's the final answer. If you want to write the recursive, previously we added or subtracted, but now we just multiply it by the common ratio. It's always going to be like this. Your next term will be the common ratio times the previous term. So initially, we started off with three kilograms. After one year, we lost 95 or what's the mass after one year? 95% of the original was conserved. It'll be three times 95 or sorry. Yeah, it'll be three times 0 0.95. That'll be 2.85, right? Mm -hmm. After year two, we're going to conserve 95% of that. That'll be like 2.7075. I just multiplied it by 95 each time. So your general form is going to be 3 times 0 0.95 to the power of n minus 1. To find t100, you just replace that n um, with 100. So it becomes 3 times 0 0.95 to the power of 99. And that is 0 0.0186 grams or kilograms, whatever. And that's the final answer. Cool? Mm -hmm. So here we're just looking for the R value. Um, all right, let's, let's call it a day there for today. OK, thank you. See ya. Yeah.